Welcome again to College Algebra. Today's topic is piecewise functions. I'm going to illustrate piecewise functions with our library functions, so let's review them briefly. There's the v-shaped abs function, the cube function and its inverse, the cube root function, the exponential function and its inverse reflected across the id function, the natural log function, the reciprocal function, which is its own inverse, the square function, and its partial inverse, the square root function. Graphed all together, they make an interesting mosaic that's obviously not a function. It wildly violates the vertical line test. But defining a function piecewise is a way around this. Think of a piecewise function as two or more functions stitched together across a domain. In this example, we're going to use the cube root and absolute value functions. For simplicity, we'll divide the domain into left and right halves at the origin. To form this piecewise function, restrict the cube root function to the left-hand plane and the absolute value function to the right-half plane. Together, these two restricted functions make up one function defined in pieces, or a piecewise function. The notation requires some disassembly. The piecewise function definition includes expressions describing the separate functions that are stitched together, along with a description of the pieces of the domain. Here, the pieces of the domain, the left and right half planes, are described by inequalities, as is customary, but you may find it more useful to think of them as intervals, using interval notation. When graphing a piecewise function, remember to read the equation right to left. This example is of a three-piece function. Note in passing we'll be graphing the cube root function, the absolute value function, and the reciprocal function. But first, we need to construct the pieces of the domain. To do so, read the right. Numbers that appear represent division points, here at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 equal signs and inequalities serve to define the intervals that make up the pieces of our domain. With the pieces of the domain mapped out, we're now ready to graph the piecewise function. Graph the functions one at a time. We'll start with the cube root function. There's no need to consider the domain pieces when you begin sketching. Just get the graph drawn. Once it's drawn, then restrict it to its proper domain piece taking special note of open ends of the interval by drawing a circle at the piece boundary. Now, just follow the same process to stitch in the other functions on their pieces, sketching and, and restricting, and sketching and restricting until you're done, marking open ends as necessary. Here are some principles to keep in mind when graphing piecewise defined functions. First, and most important, the pieces are pieces of the domain. Next, remember to read right to left, that is, graph the pieces first. Then, and only then, construct the graph by sketching and restricting. This is why you have an eraser. Graphing piecewise functions is a great example of how we can solve a complex problem by treating it as a sequence of simple problems. This is a principle I hope you'll take with you from these videos and find ways to utilize for the rest of your life.